10 a.m. service, and then at 6.30, evening service. So come and be a part of what God is doing. I believe that's all. Oh, the 29th, we're going to have a music scene. And so come and be a part of that. We're going to have our band, and we might have a visiting band. So come and be a part of that. That's the 29th. That's the following Saturday. Hallelujah. And then the 31st is Memorial Day. We'll be having our annual church picnic. And so um, come and be a part of that. It's going to be a great time. The park is open again. There's about 21 churches. We gather together and have a great time. If anybody needs to be baptized, the Lord have not been baptized, you can be baptized there. We have a couple of people. Amen. So if you're one of them, you want to be a part of this, come. Hallelujah. You will be blessed. Amen. Amen. Now, this is the favorite part. I know all of you love to give. Amen. You all look so happy when I said that word. I know you love to give because you go and give to grocery stores. You go and give to Jack in the Box. And you give to McDonald's. And you give to Starbucks. And when you give to the 99 cent store, you give to Walmart. Amen. You give everywhere. And so we should give in the house of God. The Bible says, let every man decide in his heart what he is going to give. And give it with a cheerful heart, not grudgingly. You guys don't walk into Starbucks and say, I am sick and tired of you charging me for a cup of coffee. How many of you say that when you go in to buy a cup of coffee? You charged me last time I was here. You don't say that, right? You go in there and you're happy and you pay. When you come into the house of God, we give because we are so grateful for what God has done. God is so good. How many of you bless your kids? Bless your spouse? Bless a dear friend? How much more is God worthy of a sacrifice? So let us honor God, amen, be blessed, amen, give to the Lord, and he will return to you. Ushers, why don't you come forward, amen, and we are still, amen, we're taking up World Evangelism Pledge, we want to take in November to Tucson, and we're still taking up the pledge for the building, for their building there. So please, amen, if you want to give that, just put it on your offering, and if you're going to write a check, just make it to the door of church, hallelujah, amen. Marcus, why don't you pray over the offering? We thank you, Lord. We thank you for tonight, Lord, for giving us, my Lord, a new life. We ask you, Lord, that you bless this offering, my Lord God. Multiply it. We ask you in Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, church, for your faithfulness.
And so if you have your Bibles, I'm going to be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And uh, that's going to be through uh, from verse 5 through 8. Amen. And the sermon I uh, wrote, I entitled it, Faithfulness, Not Fruitfulness. And so I want to start off by reading an article about a young man that I found. Uh, his name is Shaken Griffin, and uh, some of you may have heard of him, uh, may uh, have, have seen him play. Uh, he was playing for the Seahawks at one point. So I want to read this article to you. And so Shaken Griffin put up some impressive numbers at this year's NFL Combine. The Combine is the opportunity for prospective draft at draft picks to show off their stuff before teams make their final decision on draft day. During his senior year, Griffin was an instrumental part of an undefeated season at the University of Central Florida, where his twin brother Shaquille also played football. A two-time All-ACC selection, Shaquem was a 2017 second team All-American. Now, at the combine, he bench pressed 225 pounds 20 times before running the 40-yard dash in 4.38 seconds. This was the fastest time for a linebacker since 2003. In spite of his impressive resume, the weekend of the draft, Griffin watched as 13 linebackers were taken, but when the fourth round closed, his name had not yet been called, and he knew why. You see, Griffin was born with an amniotic band syndrome, and the result was an undeveloped left hand and painful nerve complications. At the age of four, when his mother walked into the kitchen to find Griffin with a knife preparing to cut off, it, cut off his own hand, she arranged to have it amputated. His parents raised him and his brother the same way, making only minor modifications to support Shaquem. He had to work harder than his peers to prove himself, and he always had to have a plan for succeeding with a missing limb. In the days leading up to the draft, Griffin's story was covered by several news outlets, including Sports Illustrated. The NFL had never drafted an amputee, but Griffin was too good to overlook. Albert Brer, columnist with SI, described Griffin's heart this way. Fighting through a shortcoming is one thing. Having a plan for coming out on the other side of the story is just as important. Clearly, Griffin's always had a plan. These things uh, always had a plan. These things aren't just a result of desire. There is design to it. And that design paid off. With the fourth pick in the fifth round, the Seattle Seahawks, the team which last year drafted his brother Shaquille took Shaquem. So you might be wondering, what was that design? Doubtless every adversi adversi uh, adversity required a specific game plan. But was there an overarching plan that informed all the others? Griffin was interviewed by ESPN shortly after receiving that phone call from Coach Pete Carroll. A call that concluded with Carroll telling him to stay humble and don't let this moment define you, or define who you are. In that interview, Griffin explained what it was like to watch and wait for his big moment. It was tough, he said. I'm not going to lie to you. Watching all those guys pick in front of me, just falling back and knowing that, that I did everything I was supposed to do. It was in God's hands. And so the moral of the story is do your best and then allow God to do His. Yes, amen. Amen. And so sometimes we can do our best to go all out, but we sometimes don't allow God to do His part because we're trying to make it happen. Amen. And we can begin to get discouraged and upset with God. And tonight I want to look at a few things that can help you and hopefully save you and I from some heartache. 
Amen. And so let's pray tonight. Uh, Heavenly Father, we come before you, God, asking you uh, that you would have your way, that you would just minister to us by the power of the Holy Spirit, God. Uh, I put no trust in my flesh, God. Uh, all of my trust is in you, God. Uh, and I thank you and praise you for all that you've done and all you're going to do. In Jesus' name, I pray. And the church said, Amen. 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 And so... If you have your Bibles open, I'm going to be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5 through 8. And who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers through whom you believe, as the Lord gave to each one? I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither he who plants is anything nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. Now he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. Amen. And the NIV puts it this way. What after all is Apollos and what is Paul? Only servants for whom you came to believe, as the Lord has assigned to each his task. I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but God who makes things grow. The one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose, and they will each be rewarded according to their own labor. Yes, amen. Amen. And so there are three things I want to touch on tonight. And uh, number one is ministers of the gospel. Number two, uh, I want to uh, touch on planters and waters. And thirdly, I want to touch on our reward. And so if you're a Christian in this place, and if, you, if you've been saved in this place uh, for any amount of time, I want to tell you tonight that you have been called to be a minister of the gospel. And it doesn't matter if you've been saved one year, five years, 20 years, even one day, Bible says in Revelations chapter 1, verse 4 through 6, John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth. To him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. And so Jesus has made us kings and priests, the Bible says, uh, unto his God and Father. And so maybe you're in this place and you're asking yourself, what does that mean for you and I? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Amen. And so it means that you and I, for those who speak Spanish, tú y yo, are to be proclaiming what God is saying. And that could be a matter of things. That could be one-on-one -on -one witnessing. That could be street preaching. That could be maybe witnessing at your job. Amen. Or praying for the sick. But at the end of all, uh, of it all, we are to be proclaiming His Word. Yes, we are. And so, secondly, I want to touch on planters and waters. Amen. Because each of us have a role to play. And many of us at some point looked at our, have looked at our, at our Christian lives and all we can see is barrenness. Amen. Can anybody relate? Have you just looked at your life as a Christian and just seen barrenness? And we can be hard on ourselves sometimes because we have never seen people from our outreach maybe come to church. Maybe we prayed with somebody, but they never came to church. Amen. Or worse, maybe you witnessed and you prayed with somebody. and uh, or, or you're witnessing and nobody ever prays. But there's hope, church. I want to reference back to our text, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6 through 7. So then neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. 
And so many times out of desperation, we try and change people. And so many times yeah. we can take it upon ourselves right. to build God's church. Yeah. And we can try to take on a test that me and you were never meant to carry. That's right. Jesus said in Matthew, I will build my church. Not you will build my church. That's right. I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail. Amen. Amen. And so it is not up for us to produce fruit because we can't. That is God's job. And our job is to be faithful in planting and watering. And so I want to look, what, what does it mean to be faithful? And so if you look at, at, at Weber's, they have a, a couple of different uh, ones of what this word means. And so one of them is steadfast in affection or allegiance. The second one is firm in adherence to promises or an observance of duty. Three is given with strong assurance. Four is true to the fact, to a standard or to an original. And five means obsolete. And so me and you, or you and I, amen, we must be faithful in planting seed. You know, we, we really must be faithful in, in planting seed. And that means outreaching. That means telling people about Jesus. Telling what people what Jesus has done in your own personal lives. Amen. And also, it means watering. It means that, you, you know, there's many types of, of, uh, of ways we can water these seeds. But primarily, it's follow-up. Hey, man, how's it going? You know, are you doing okay? I'm thinking about you, man. It's going to be all right. You know, maybe it's inviting somebody over to your house, having dinner with them, amen, getting to know them. And a lot of the times, it's going to take personal finances and personal time. Yes. Amen. Amen. You know, we can make our life so much harder than it should be, or our jobs harder than it should be as a Christian. We can try so hard to build a church that we just end up converting and producing flesh babies. <laughs> Amen. And if you don't know what a flesh baby is, it's the person that may come in and stick around for a minute, but something takes place in their lives it shakes them, and they just come crumbling down because they don't have a relationship with God. Yeah. And sometimes it's just because uh, flesh babies are just people that like you, and they just come to church because they like you. <laughs> but they never truly change. Yeah. You know, and it's very funny to me because in many, many times we try so hard to save others when we couldn't save ourselves. Amen. But thank God that he doesn't leave us to ourselves. Amen. Right. And so thirdly, I want to look at our reward. And uh, so we often confuse God's timing with ours. A country newspaper had been running a series of articles on the value of church attendance. One day a letter to the editor was received in the newspaper office. It read, print this if you dare. I've been trying an experiment. I have a field of corn, which I plowed on Sunday. I planted it on Sunday. I did all the cultivating on Sunday. I gathered the harvest on Sunday and hauled it to my barn on Sunday. I find that my harvest is, uh, I find that my harvest this October is just as great as any of my neighbors who went to church on Sunday. So where was God all this time? The editor printed the letter, but added his reply at the bottom. Your mistake was thinking that God always settles his accounts in October. <laughs> That's right. Amen. Excuse me. <laughs> And 
so many times we can look at our situation and we can question God and we can wonder if God is even moving in our church and in our lives. And how do I know? It's because I've been there myself, church. I've been saved nearly seven years now. And I've seen people come in and I've seen people come out. I've seen people come in and come out. I've gone from seeing five people to 30 people. And then I've seen 30 people going back to two people. Amen. I have seen fruitful seasons and I have seen some pretty dry, uh, dry seasons. And there have been times where I would question myself and I would question my own salvation. And I would question if the Spirit of God was even with me. Because I would witness faithfully. I would pray with people. But I would never see them again. And maybe you've been there. Amen. You're faithful to outreach. You Maybe you're driving down the road. And, and so you decide to get out. You witness. But you never see those people come in and get saved. And it's so easy to get weary. It's so easy to get discouraged and stop doing what we do. But I want to encourage you tonight. Don't give up. Hold on. 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15 verse 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Because, church, we don't labor in vain. And we must wait on the Lord, for we have a promise. And maybe you find yourself in that place tonight. I want to challenge you to wait on the Lord. Isaiah 40, 31 says, For those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. Amen. They shall walk and not faint. And uh, maybe you're tired in this place, church. God can strengthen you. He can help you to rise above your discouragement, above doubt and unbelief. Amen. Trust God. Keep pushing. Keep grinding. And wait on the Lord. Because as our story, within Shaken's story, I want to tell you that sometimes... The increase does not come till the fifth round. Amen. And remember that God does not only settle his, uh, settles his accounts in October like we think he does or should. But one thing we can bank on is that he will. Yeah, that's right. He will. Amen. And uh, uh, this isn't in my notes, but... Uh, so in our church right now in Hillsborough, um, as I said, over the years we have seen some fruitful seasons and we have seen uh, some dry seasons. But God is doing something in our churches. And not just in our church, but the churches in the Northwest. You know, and these people aren't necessarily people that we're encountering and witnessing to. These are people that we're just contending, right? We're just praying. And these are people that God is bringing into our churches. And these people are giving their lives to Jesus. And God is doing something in their lives. I want to close with this. I remember when I was dealing with this in my own life. And uh, God just dealt with me. And spoke to me. And you know, it wasn't like God spoke to me in an audible voice. Uh, you know, I've heard some people uh, say that God has spoken to them in an audible voice. But in my case, it wasn't like that. And it wasn't a, you know, Moses moment, Edgar, Edgar. <laughs> take thy Nikes off till you are standing on holy ground. It wasn't that. I mean, it would be cool. But it wasn't. But simply... When God spoke to me were, were these words in Zechariah 4, 6. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Yes, and church, it is not by our strength, and nor by, uh, not by our might, but it is by the spirit of God that draws a man to repentance. Amen. 
And we need to understand that because it is impossible to reap fruit, good fruit, without God. We can reap flesh babies all day. <laughs> Amen. But we will never reap lasting and good fruit without God. And as a Christian and as a fellowship, we cannot do what we do on our own. We need the Spirit of God to be involved. And we need to remember to do our part, which is to witness, to pray, yeah. to contend for God to yes, move, yes. and to leave the rest up to Him. And if we do that, we will see God move in a way that we have never seen Him move. Now I'll say one thing, church. Revival is coming. Yes, it is. And if you're not looking around at what is taking place, church, it's not just in our churches, but it is, it is around the world. God is let, getting a hold of people. God is drawing people to himself. But we need to remember that we need to obey God and what he's asking us to do. And as we do so, Scripture says in verse 8, now he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. Right. As we do our part, as we plant seed, as we water, we will eventually receive our reward according to our labor. And so don't be expecting God to move in your life to see fruitfulness if you're not participating, if you're not witnessing. That's right. You know, I've come across people that that you, you know they want to see God's blessing, they want to see God bring in people, but they're not contending. Amen. They're not witnessing. They're not on outreach. Amen. Amen. We need to do our part. And uh, as we are faithful, God is the one who brings fruitfulness. Yes. And we must remember that. That is crucial. Because if you don't, you're just going to be banging your head on a desk asking yourself why God isn't moving. God brings the increase. And God brings in the harvest. We just collect it. Amen. But we need to remember to be fruit, uh, faithful. Because that's what God is calling us to do. God is calling us to be faithful. God isn't calling us necessarily... He, you know, He wants us to be fruitful, but not on our own. Because we can't, we can't produce fruit. That's right. We just collect the harvest, as I said. Amen. And so that is all I have tonight. If I could have every head bowed and every eye closed in this place. I just want to make a simple call. Maybe you're in this place, church. You've never given, or, or beloved, maybe you've never given your life to Jesus Christ. But you're in this place and you're tired of life. You're bound to addiction. You're broken. You don't have any hope. I want to let you know that Jesus Christ is the answer. Over five years ago, I gave my life to Jesus Christ. And Jesus completely changed me from the inside out. And changed me. Amen. And broke the addictions in a moment of time. And so if you're in this place uh, and you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I just want you to, I don't want to embarrass you, but I want to ask you if you would lift your hand in this place. I don't, I don't want to embarrass anybody, but uh, uh, you know, I just want to give you the opportunity to get right with God. And so I'm not going to hold this much longer. And so if you're wanting to give your life to Jesus, lift up your hand. Amen. I see that, brother. You can put it down. Maybe you've given your life to Jesus Christ at one point in your life. 
But because of circumstances, because of discouragement, maybe you didn't see what you wanted to see. Uh, you uh, you neg neglected your relationship with God and you walked away. And you're backsliding. I want to tell you, church, that the Bible says that God is married to the backslider. And God loves you so much that he sent Jesus Christ to, to die in your place. And even though you walked away from God, God has never walked away from you. And he wants to restore you tonight. Your backslider, raise your hand in this place if you want to get your hand heart right with God. Amen, brother. Thank you for your honesty. Is there anybody else? I don't want to embarrass anybody, but I'm moving quickly. So if there's anybody backsliding or, or sinner, you want to get your heart right with God, raise your hand. Amen, brother. Can, uh, brother, that you, lift, you lifted your hand. Could you look at me? Brother, you meant that? Amen. One of the brothers is going to come and uh, lead you in a sinner's prayer. And uh, amen. And so speaking to Christians, tonight uh, you're sitting in this place and uh, God has spoken to you. God has challenged you. Uh, maybe you have found yourself uh, in this place of frustration and doubt. I want to encourage you, church. God is going to move. God is going to, to give you fruit. Amen. And so I want to open these altars. If God spoke to you, if God challenged you, if God uh, uh, has just, uh, uh, you know, if God has challenged you, come down. I want to open these altars. Amen. Lay a hold of God. Make fresh commitments. Amen. And we're going to sing a song. Amen, church.
and you want to get filled with the Holy Ghost tonight, I want you to, I don't want to embarrass you, just raise your hand, church. Never been filled with the Holy Ghost, but you want to do that tonight. <laughs> Amen. Anybody? You want to come, sister? Come down. Come down. Don't want to embarrass anybody. Amen. And so, we're going to contend for you folks tonight and believe God to fill you with the Holy Ghost. And one thing you guys got to understand is that the Holy Ghost isn't something that you have to thank God to give. It's something that God gives you freely. It's why Jesus had to leave his disciples. It was because he needed to leave so that the Holy Spirit could come down. And once that happened, I don't know how long you can say you may have read this. It says that they were in the upper room, 120 of them, and they all got filled with the Holy Ghost and spoke in other tongues. And it's more than just speaking in a weird language. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> it's power from heaven to live a life on this earth with power so that you can overcome. And not only that, but I want to do something. I want to ask um, Pastor and uh, Flavio if you could come down and uh, Brother Mike. Um, so when it comes to being filled with the Holy Ghost in Scripture, it says that the apostles laid hands on them. Amen. And so that's what we want to do tonight is we want to lay hands on you and believe God to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so I'm just going to lead you in a, in a prayer, a simple prayer. And after that, we're just going to praise God just in normal, plain English. And we're going to believe God to fill you tonight. Amen. So uh, let's uh, bow our heads and just repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I come before you. God, I thank you for Jesus Christ and the blood that he shed on the cross for my sin. Thank you, Heavenly Father. But I'm asking you tonight, God, to fill me up with the power of the Holy Ghost, God. Fill me with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. God, we thank you. Oh, Oh, 
church. Uh, our sister has just been dealing with stress and anxiety, and so we want to believe God to set her free tonight. Amen. And so just stretch out your uh, your hand where you're at, amen, and believe it. Uh, and let's pray for our sister. God, I pray that you touch my sister, God. Lord, I pray that you touch her as a Same thing, 
anxiety, depression, whatever it is you need, whenever it comes and tries to, to bring you down, whenever you're depressed, uh, you need to pray, you need to just see God and be, believe God. And again, the story I shared with you folks right now, just full of anxiety and fear one morning, and I went to the church and I prayed in tongues. And that's all I, I think that's all I did that morning. I, I seriously, I couldn't, even, I didn't even know what to pray about. But God met me in that room. And so, brother, when that comes, you just pray the sinner's prayer. You have dominion and you have authority to stomp on scorpions and say, says, amen. Take dominion over that whenever it tries to come over. And sometimes depression will try to wipe us out, man. It will try to wipe us out from church. That's why God gave you a pastor. Call your pastor. I know your pastor, man. He, he loves people. And he makes time for people. Call your pastor. And he can pray for you. He can give you guidance. Amen. And so I just want to challenge you to do that. Uh, even in just in your own personal mind. And we're going to pray for you and just uh, contend God to save you free from that, okay? All right, let's pray, church. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you and we thank you. God, we're asking that you are a child of God. God, we thank you. Lord, the blood of Jesus sets us free. God, we will not be bound by this life. Lord, we speak strength and joy and peace and wholeness in the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Loose your hold, you lying spirit. The blood of Jesus sets him free. Tate robo Touch him right now, God. You touch his mind and his heart and his mind. Wholeness, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, church. Now, that's all I have for tonight, and I appreciate you folks allowing me to pray for you. Amen. And I just want to thank uh, this congregation and your pastor once again just for giving me this uh, enormous opportunity uh, to do so. You know, can I just tell you that you guys have such a great pastor and pastor's wife. Amen. Your pastor, he's like a father figure. He's never, I've never been his disciple, he's never been my pastor, but I just remember as a young convert, I came in and he just embraced me, he just loved me. He cared for me, encouraged me, amen, and him and events have just been a blessing to our lives, amen. And so, link hearts with your pastor, church, that's another important thing. Link hearts with your pastor, and once you do that, church, the things that God can begin to do will blow your mind. Amen. Amen. And so that's all I have tonight. Amen. 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 And now, if you knew this, this was his very first time preaching. Boys are natural, huh? Amen. 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 That's what we're all about. 
giving men opportunity to step into their destiny. Yes. That's what we do. We facilitate a place where men can fail and men can grow and men can learn and men can step out in faith and see God use them. Amen. First time, amen. Preaching, pray for the sick, pray for people get filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Wonderful. Amen. Let that be, uh, let that stir you. Let that challenge you. Amen. I wish I would have preached that well my first time. Amen. <laughs> I don't think I can preach that well now, but amen. God is good. Amen. We're going to, we're going to close. Why don't you, before you go, just tell them. And a great destiny that you love them and you appreciate them. Let's just bow our heads. Father, we just thank you for the blood of Jesus that heals our body and washes our sins away and heals our hearts and our minds and our emotions. Lord, right now we take authority over every lying spirit that would hold us bound. We speak liberty and freedom. You died, Jesus, to set us free. We receive that freedom through your blood, and we thank you. Be with us as we go, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, church. You are dismissed.